The next thing that we need to install is an editor for Python. If you've already been following some Python tutorials, you probably have your own favorite editor and you can use that. Otherwise, I would recommend using Visual Studio Code. If you search for Visual Studio Code, then you can find this Visual Studio Code editor, which is a lightweight, open source, free editor from Microsoft, and it's really good. Whatever you do, don't confuse this with Visual Studio. Visual Studio is a massive integrated development environment for various languages. We don't need that. What we need is Visual Studio Code, which is this lightweight editor. So if you install that, then start it up. And when it starts up, you're going to see a home screen that looks a bit like this. It won't look the same because I've already been using this for a while, but it's going to look something like this. The next thing that you want to do is install an extension for working specifically with Python. Now, there may be a link to that on the home screen. And if so, click that and install the Python extension. If you don't see it, there's this icon here, which says extensions when I hover over it, like it's like some building blocks. And if I click on that, in there I can search for Python and just install the first suggestion that it makes, and that will probably do the trick. This is gonna do stuff like highlight your code intelligently. So it will help you to figure out which bit of your code does what, basically. Once you've got the extension installed, there's an icon at the top here called Explorer. And if you click that, it enables you to explore your files. And what you need to do is create a folder on your system where you're going to put your work, where you're gonna put your Python files for this tutorial. Then click Open Folder and navigate to that folder. Just click it and open it. And from then on, whichever files you create, you'll be able to see them listed on the left here. And you can open and close this just by clicking the icon. You can create files in here in the typical way. There is a file menu, which is probably off the area of recording here maybe, but if I click that, there's an option, new text file, and that's what I would normally use. Because Python programs are just a collection of text files, one or more text files. And the Python program that we've already been running is a kind of interpreter which interprets those text files. You write Python code in the text files and then you tell the interpreter to run that code and it runs it. Visual Studio Code also has a built-in terminal, which means you probably don't need to use your system's terminal. I'm gonna be using the terminal on my Mac sometimes. Other times I'll use the built-in terminal in Visual Studio Code. It's just a matter of preference. So there's a menu called Terminal. And if I go to that, I can go to New Terminal. And I get a terminal like this. The important thing is we need to set this up just like we set up the other terminal. So if you want to use PowerShell, you can type PWSH like before. If you've already got it installed, that should work. And you need to activate your virtual environment or create one if you haven't already created one. So I haven't already created one in this folder, I don't think. So I'm gonna type the Python command just like we did before, hyphen m venv venv like this. So I wait for that to install and then I activate it with vem slash bin slash activate dot ps1 and I run that and then I've got my Python virtual environment right here and I can use it. There is actually also a PowerShell extension. If you click on extensions here and search for PowerShell 
there's this extension right here. Now I haven't used that. It may be more convenient than installing PowerShell from the website and then I don't really know what it does to be honest, but you can try that out if you want to and I'm sure it's good. But one way or another, you need to be able to see a terminal and you need to have PowerShell activated if you're gonna use PowerShell, which I recommend, and the virtual environment for Python has to be activated when you use it. And once you've got that, you're ready to begin writing Python programs and running them. This is a free video from my course, Python and Machine Learning for Complete Beginners. I'm releasing the first couple of chapters of this course completely for free on YouTube to get you started with Python. I plan to upload new videos here to YouTube every Monday and every Thursday for at least a couple of months. If you're interested in the complete course, which teaches you Python from scratch and eventually progresses to things like creating graphical user interfaces and using neural networks, principal component analysis, cluster analysis, all that stuff, and much more besides. Then you can find a link in the description or just go to this URL on the screen right here. If you finish the whole course, you'll be able to write all kinds of general purpose programs in Python and use Python to do machine learning and artificial intelligence as well. Thank you for watching. Until next time, happy coding.